there are two ways to solve a differential equation. The first one is going to be an analytical solution, and the second one is a numerical solution. Now, if you've given, been given a, a differential equation such as this, okay, with initial condition equals zero, and you're told to come up with a solution for x of t, maybe from zero to five on the time. Okay, so what is that solution? So the very first way, the analytical solution, you can use something like uh, separate and integrate, or you could use something like Laplace transforms. Okay, and if you go through that, then you're gonna come up with a solution to this problem, okay, with this analytical solution right here, it's going to be x of t equals 12 times 1 minus e to the minus t. Okay, so that's going to be your analytical solution. I'm not going to go through the methods here of separate and integrate or Laplace transforms, but um, we're going to take a different approach here. Okay, and we're going to compute a numerical solution. I'll show you how to do that with one of two ways. We're going to review Euler's formula or Euler's method. It's an explicit or implicit Euler's method. We're going to talk about the explicit one. It's a little bit easier. And we'll solve that with Excel. All right, and then we're also going to cover uh, some more advanced methods of solving these differential equations that are a little bit more accurate, such as orthogonal collocation on finite elements, or, okay, I'll, I'll just write that out here, or there are other methods such as the Rungakata or others that you could use. Okay, so a lot of packages that are out there in Python. We're just gonna focus on some very simple syntax and a very simple example for this first one. Okay, so this is the problem that we're gonna try to solve. Let's go ahead and just do this with Excel, first of all. All right, so if I have something like uh, time, and then I create an X, and I give my initial condition zero, and let's say I go zero, 0 0.1, all the way up to, let's just go up to, okay, 1.6 here. We'll go up to two, there we go. All right, so we're gonna go up to two, and we are going to solve this um, using an Euler's method. All right, so Euler's method, if I give myself a little bit more room here, okay, Euler's method for this, I'm just gonna approximate this as delta x over delta t, okay, as my derivative plus x equals 12. And I'm gonna start with this first zero value, all right, and then I wanna be able to calculate where this is going to go, okay? This is gonna be my x of t, the function of time. So I'm just gonna take this very first step right here and calculate the slope. So this is the slope right here. And so this is going to be x uh, at time zero, and then this is going to be x at time 0 0.1. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, create a formula for that to solve for x of at 0 0.1. Okay, so that's going to be x at 0 0.1 minus x at 0 divided by 0 0.1 seconds. Okay, plus, and then I'm going to use x at 0 equals 12. Now if I solve it for x of zero, then I come up with a formula here. Okay, x of 0 0.1 equals, and then I'm gonna put this, multiply that over after I draw that one over. Okay, so minus x zero. Okay, that one is gone right there. And then I'm going to multiply over 0 0.1, and 
and then I'll add that, okay, x0 over onto the right hand side. Okay, so that's going to give me my formula 12 minus x0, okay, times 0 0.1 plus x0. All right, so let's go ahead and just write this out in Excel now. All right, so that's going to be equal to, okay, 12 minus my very first x, okay, times 0 0.1. That's going to be my change in time, right here, the delta t, and then plus my original x0 value. All right, so here is the value. If I just go ahead and double click it when it's on the black x, I can go down and see the final value here. And then let me go ahead and just plot this. Okay, so I'm going to select all of that. And I am going to insert a chart. And I can see the solution to my differential equation right here. Okay, so that's how I do it in Excel. Now let's go ahead and solve the same thing with Python. All right, so I have a Jupyter Notebook right here. And there are a couple different packages that you can use. There's a package called, um, you know, if you want to import, sorry, from scipy.integrate, uh, you can import like odint. Okay, we're gonna cover another one. We'll just have to pip install gecko as a very first step. Okay, it will install Gecko if it's already satisfied. Uh, then you can just comment that out. If you just installed it, go ahead and restart your kernel. All right, and then if we run that again, it's commented out. We don't need to install it again. All right, let's go ahead and insert a cell below, and then we'll just say from Gecko import Gecko. And we'll also need NumPy for th from this. Okay, so import NumPy as MP. All right, so we've in imported our packages. And then let's go ahead and just uh, create a new Gecko model. Okay, if you don't want to solve on the remote server, just say remote equals false. And so I've created my Gecko model now. And I'll insert a cell below. I'll just create a new variable. Okay, and I'll give it an initial value of zero. All right, and then what I can do is just say m dot equation and x, okay, dx dt. And I'll write that as x dot dt with open and close parentheses plus x equals 12. Don't forget the double equal sign there. Okay, so now I've defined my equation. And now what I want to do is um, go ahead and define my time. And my time, I'll just say that's going to be linearly spaced values between 0 and 5. If you want to do it just like the Excel one, do it to 2. Okay, but I'll go up to 5 just to show a little further in the simulation. All right. And then I'm going to solve it. I'll change my mode to simulation. And then I'll solve. I'll say display equals false to not display. OK, so let's see. Oh, I, I defined uh, two equations because I ran that one again. OK, so let me go ahead and just run this again just to clear that one. And you can see it solved successfully. Okay, now let me go ahead and just insert a cell below. Let's go ahead and plot the solution. I'll import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then plt.plot m.time with x. All right, so there's our differential equation, just like we saw with Excel. All right, I'm going to cover just a slightly more complicated example now and show you a little bit more about what Gecko can do over something like an Euler's method with Excel. So um, 
what I'm going to do here is just modify this one a little bit more where maybe this is a decision variable you and I'm going to create a new parameter okay u equals m dot param and maybe I'm going to say that equals 12 or I can also have it as a manipulated variable I can let the optimizer decide its value so I could say something like lower bound equals 0 and upper bound equals 12 okay and then I could also put in an objective here that says minimize uh, x minus 5 squared for example so now I can make this into an optimization problem where it solves a differential equation but is optimizing to a target. So I'll do u dot status equals one to let the optimizer be able to use that. Okay. And then I'm minimizing it. I'll have to just change this to dynamic optimization mode six now. All right. And then in addition to plotting x, let's go ahead and just plot our u value as well. on the same plot. I'll just do kernel, restart, and run all. Then I'll give a little bit more description about what I just did here. Okay, so I'm trying to drive x to a value of five, and you can see what the u value, that's the orange value right there. And I'll make that a dashed line, just so it's a little easier to see that they're just on top of each other. So there's my X in blue and the dashed line is U. So I was able to optimize now to not just say simulate this, but have some decision variable that would help me drive to a particular solution. So let's just review that, um, how you would actually do that with Excel as well. Okay, so here instead of my uh, value of 12 right here, Okay, I would put in a value of u. Okay, so I'd insert a new u value, and let's say that's zero, and I'll just fill this one down right here. Oh, here we go. Okay, and Okay, so now I have my U value right here. And let's say I wanted to make that an adjustable parameter to try to meet a certain target, like try to drive X to a value of five. Then I would just change my Euler's uh, expression here. Okay, so now instead of 12, I would have a value of U. I'll copy this down. Okay, you can see that went to value of zero everywhere. And then if I put in a certain value like five, I can see this differential equation changing right here. But now I want to try to optimize this. I want to try to optimize uh, and change the value of u so that I drive to a target of five. So maybe I have in here, I'll go ahead and just minimize this a little bit. Okay, so this is my target, and I'd say this is my error squared. So that is going to be equal to this, minus 5, and then I'm going to square it. Okay, and then I'll just copy that formula everywhere, and then come up with a sum of squared error. So if I say it equals the sum of that, And you can see that's 467. And that's what I want to try to minimize now to try to drive an x value to 5, okay, by changing this value of u right here. So let's go ahead and just make that a little bit smaller just so I can fit it all onto one window. Okay. And let's go ahead and bring up our solver now. Okay. So data over here is solver. If you don't have that, just come over here to file and then options, and then you go to add-ins, and go to Excel add-ins and click go, 
and just make sure that solver add-in is selected and click OK. And after you do that, then the solver should show up right here. So all I want to try to do is minimize, minimize my sum of squared errors. And by changing, okay, I'm going to change all of these U values. All right, now I might be subject to some constraints like, um, you know, let's say these U values have to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and then I'm going to add another one. It says all of these U values, maybe they have to be less than or equal to 12. Okay, and then I can uh, click Solve. Make sure you unselect this if you do want your variables to go negative. And I'll click Solve. And you can see it came up with a similar solution there as I had before. So let's go ahead and just um, plot the U values as well. I'll insert a chart. Okay, so it came up with uh, some U values here that were similar to what we saw. With the other one, you could see the very last one came down. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to do that. Uh, it doesn't really influence the solution at all. Okay, because it there's no dependence there. It doesn't use that value. Okay, so here we've set up an optimization problem with our differential equation. Not only are we solving it, but we're also trying to uh, in this case, we added something. We said we wanted to minimize x minus 5 squared, okay? And then we set up something there like a u variable that we could adjust that up or down in order to try to, try to meet this objective, okay? So x minus 5 squared. So we're going to solve differential equations in this class um, for dynamic optimization that are going to include objective functions. We're gonna formulate the, the problems in a way that um, you know, help us solve these very efficiently using orthogonal collocation on finite elements. Um, so I wanna show you just one more example with this. So let's say you have many differential equations Okay, with an input and an output, we're gonna do something similar to what we just did with the other example. Okay, import NumPy as MP from Gecko, import Gecko, and we'll solve it locally. We'll have our one input U. We'll have some states, okay, X1 to X5, and then our output Y. And then let's go ahead and define a couple, few constants here. Okay, our parameter that has to go between 0 and 10, maybe has an initial value of 3. I'm also going to create a variable array now of 5 values. And you can see that it's m.var instead of just m.var that I showed before. Okay, I'm going to use these 5 uh, to be 5 differential equations that I'm going to solve. And then I also maybe have an intermediate. Okay, I'm going to define my output y. But uh, these intermediates are like uh, variables and equations that you've combined into one. It explicitly solves those. So those are going to be very valuable, for, especially for complex models, where you have many individual pieces that maybe you want to substitute into equations and not solve those with e implicit equations. All right, here's my first equation, very similar to the one that you just saw. But maybe I have some additional equations these other four for i in range 1 to n, for example. Okay, I'm going to try to minimize y minus 5, similar to the one differential equation that I had before. And then I'm going to have my linearly spaced values between 0 and 20. And then I'll, first of all, solve it just with a dynamic simulation just to show how this works. And then let's go ahead and just show, um, oh, I lost that here. Okay, so make that a little bit bigger. Here's just plotting the solution. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. Okay, and it's gonna come up with a plot here. 
where we can see the solution to the differential equation. You can see it's going to 12, just like that first one where we just had one differential equation going up to um, 12 as well. Okay, it's similar, that one differential equation is similar to that blue line right there. But then you have x1, which is the orange, green is x2, red is x3, and then purple is x4, but that's also equal to my output. So in this case, I have five differential equations that define these five states. So let's optimize this one. I'm going to switch this over to I mode 6. All right, and then I'm going to switch this parameter to an MV. That's going to be a manipulated variable. And then I'm going to have u.status equals 1. So I'm going to make it adjustable by the optimizer. All right, so let's go ahead and run this one as well. And you can see uh, the solution right here as it tried to drive it to the value of 5. Now, the, the important one here is this uh, dashed line right here. And you can see that's going to be the minimum, the minimum possible objective. There's a little bit of overshoot that you can see right up here at the top. Uh, but then it quickly gets to a solution of 5. All right, now maybe you want to also see, um, let's go ahead and just put the u value on here as well. Okay, run this one more time. And there, okay, there you can see the u value as well. That's going to be... Um, this uh, brown line right here. We didn't include it in the legend, but so you can see that's not necessarily the way we would want to control this equipment. Let's say this were a car and the U value were our gas pedal and the speed were the black dash line. We wouldn't necessarily want to hit the gas pedal hard, back off, hit it again. So we're going to, in this course, also define ways of defining the objective function so it gives us a range so we want to make it to the solution with minimal movement of our manipulated variable okay so i'm going to close this now and then let me just review with you just a little bit about uh, the different types of variables and objects that are in gecko so we're going to create a model within gecko Okay, and this is going to be m equals gecko. And we're going to say that either remote equals uh, true or false. So depending on where you want to solve it. So once I've created my model, then I can define things like constants. Okay, so n equals 5. Or I could also say k equals m dot constant and give that a value of 6 for example okay so this these are going to be constants they're never expected to change then I have another type it's going to be my parameter now a parameter is something that you can specify at the different time points so here are my time points. And this parameter right here can then take on different values during these different time segments. Okay, and those are going to be like a user input. But there's two special types of parameters. There's going to be an FV, and you define that with m.fv. And that's going to be a single value that is going to be constant over the whole horizon. But with status on, it can move that up or down. Okay, so when status equals 1, then we can, the solver can then use it to optimize. All right, then another one that we have is m.mv. And that's similar to the parameter where the user input those values uh, with um, you know, u.value equals and then just a list of values 
like that. Now with m.mv, okay, the one that we have here, now you're gonna have something that's like a parameter, but now the solver can adjust that at these different times, up or down, in order to try to minimize the objective function. So this first one is going to be our FV, and then the second one right here, that's going to be our MV. And again, that's when you turn on status equals one. Okay, so now we have another one. So if we have uh, X value, and we say that is a variable. Okay, we can also upgrade these, just like the parameters. We can upgrade these to um, a state variable. Okay, that's just like a certain type of variable that's special that we want to. There's a couple extra uh, parameters in that object, but the main one that we're gonna be dealing with is m.cv. All right, so a CV is a special one. This is one that in control, maybe you have a specific target for it, or maybe in estimation, you have some measurements that, and you wanna to try to minimize the, the um, model fit to data. Okay, so this one, we're gonna have a particular set point, or we're also going to have measurements and we're going to try to minimize the error between those measurements and the prediction okay so for this one if you have it controlling to a set point you can turn that on as well with status equals one and if you have measurements that you want to try to match to then you use f status or feedback status and turn that one to one Okay, and then there are some other types of variables that just help us model and be a, just a little bit more efficient. And we showed already the intermediate, okay, where you define your equation here and it explicitly uh, solves that and then substitutes it into the other equations. Okay, so um, those are some of the different types of variables, parameters. Uh, you have FVs and MVs, SVs and CVs, and then you also have objectives as well. So uh, you can also have an M dot minimize. You can have a an M dot maximize. Okay, and you can include as many objectives as you want. It'll just add them together. All right, and then you also have equations. Okay, if you put an S there, then it lets you put in a list of equations. Finally, the very last thing that you're gonna do is solve it. And if you put in here uh, display equals false, then it doesn't show the solver output. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of a gecko model for simulation, but also for control. We're going to be covering um, some more of these exercises. If you just come here to apminer.com slash do, this is the course website. And this very first one that we're covering here is here on this formulation strategies. So I'll post the code here if you'd like to follow along. There's a little bit on AP Monitor as well if you want to use MATLAB. Um, the form is just a little bit different. Okay, but Gecko is maybe just a little bit easier to use. Okay, so here's the source code for the one that we just covered and uh, it has a simulation. Okay, if you're also interested in just solving differential equations, uh, here are some additional examples here at this URL. And it shows how to solve differential equations with Gecko. If you're just interested in solving differential equations and you don't need to uh, optimize them, 
and you want to use something like ODEint, here is some ex additional examples just with ODEint. Okay, so also a nice OD, uh, ordinary differential equation solver that's in Python. Okay, so we've covered quite a bit. Um, let me just go ahead and summarize the, the whole roadmap that we had. Here we can solve either analytically or numerically. And uh, you know, we didn't cover any of the separate and integrate or Laplace transforms um, to solve those analytically. Covered some numerical solutions here with uh, Euler's method and using Excel. So that was the very first one that we, we covered. And then also solving it in Python. The method that it used was orthogonal collocation on finite elements. There's more information in the course that we're gonna be covering on that. And then we also took it one step further. We solved a system of five differential equations. So a fifth order system. And then we also did one other thing. We also added an objective function, something we were trying to maximize or minimize with an input to our model. So quite a bit that we've covered here today. I also gave just an overview of Gecko and how to solve problems with the Gecko package.